So as such, voter participation remains low. Communities of color and poor communities, they're largely excluded from the political process. So there's a million dollar question that I want to pose. How can policies transform political engagement to make it not only possible, but also probable that people will participate? There's a lot we don't know yet about why increasing and improving participation is so very challenging for us in the U.S. But what we do know is that strengthening organizations needs to be at the heart of any meaningful effort to do so. If we were doing this a week before this last election, I, I might have probably overthought this whole thing. Um, but I think that we just saw very clearly that uh, there's um, there's a big there's there's a big problem with with uh, there's a big part of our country that that's not being heard. See, I'm in Mississippi. These people have never been heard in their entire lives. If you're in any other state that doesn't benefit from the electoral college in this country, then your voice isn't heard. I mean, the only way people are going to participate in this process is if the process wants the people to participate in it, right? So there are an amazing amount of people in this country who their votes just don't count. And so why participate in the process? if you feel like it's going to be futile. Whenever you're ready, good sir, the floor is yours. Well, be, before I start, I just want to say to Jeremy, that was, you know, you're, you're preaching to the choir. I agree with you. Um, Wonderful. I, yeah, I mean, I don't know, know what else to say about that. Uh, obviously, we're, we think alike. So good. With, that, with that said, I have voted in every election since I was able to vote once I was 18, because I was taught, I, you know, I was brought up in a family that believed in the duty of voting and being engaged in, in our right to vote and be a part of society that way and have our voices heard that way. I think it's really important for people to remember that. So I, I see a lot of our entertainers and politicians and people in, who are in higher positions who are out there to promote voting. They were doing it. But there's been so much misinformation, so much propaganda from both sides for the last, gosh, I don't know how many elections. It's just been a constant flood of, of mis disinformation. And of course, the last few cycles, because of who we know is running, there was a lot of that going on. And you had this massive propaganda ma uh, machine uh, I say more negatively speaking on the right side than the left. I feel like the platform was the party's contract with people back in the day. The platform, the presidential. Platform. Right. Exactly. What are you? What's your platform? What are you going to do to help people and change lives for the better in this country? Well, what are the policies? About, I, I, identity, it's all identity politics now, right? Yes. It's all about grievances and pitting people with the divide and conquer attitude. I think that they're trying to play the same game. So for instance, here's the thing. Right now, when it comes to being able to spread information in a very credible fashion, it's being done so via sound bites. And there's only one thing to do when you're actually spreading information right. via sound bites: to condense and to go for the jugular. And what happens is that we remove policies being emphasized when that's the case. So there's all these, there are shades of gray and most people fall into that area. You know, and so what's happening is people are getting put, pushed all the way to this side with this belief system or all the way to that side with this belief system. And then all these people in the middle are getting completely left out. Pick number two is a thought provoking topic. And I call this one critical thinking, guys and gals, because we have to be able to ensure and encourage the status quo to be challenged by all of us. Uh, the question I have now for Jeremy and Matt, starting with Matt this time as we rotated around, is one that I think will hopefully speak to all of you. If you could ensure every person on the planet would have access to a single human right, I know there are so many, but if we could ensure every person on this planet to have access to one single human right, which one would you choose and why? I'll preface it just by saying that uh, all human rights are interconnected, obviously, and inter interdependent, meaning that no one right can fully be enjoyed without the others. 
if you're gonna pick one, for me, it would be the right to uh, health care, and you know, for everyone. That's one of the big ones, and that's not just because I'm Doctor Fink. It's just I, I've always believed in universal health care for this country because we're the only country in the industrialized, free, dem democratic world. Well, I should say some communist countries have it too, but they, they, everybody's in those other places. The people are taken care of better with their health care because it's, it's, um, it's universal. Wow, I mean, it, it really, it is so hard to narrow it down uh, to one thing because, uh, you know, you, you really truly you can't. You know, everybody deserves to be able to eat and to be able to have health care and all of that stuff. Um, you know, and but but the question is that we have to narrow it down to one thing, right? Um, if I could, if I could narrow it down to one thing, that I, I wish for everyone on this planet to have the, the the resources, which means which includes the food and the shelter and the funds. So I'm kind of clumping it all in with this. So all of those things that would have to be possible for this, but I would love for everybody on the planet to have have the resources, the insight. The ability, uh, the the desire, and the lack of fear to travel to every corner of this planet to get to see how all of the others that we tend to fear and marginalize live, love, worship, and survive. It is official, and with 36, it is official. Both Matt Fink and Jeremy London will advance to round three of the TCAN Celebrity Tournament. Uh, man, oh man, they are going on around number three.